what's up guys welcome to my channel if you are new yet my name is divine i'm a musical five minominak drummer and a keyboardist i have been for many many years i started making these videos as a space for music lovers like myself to check out our favorite artists and break down some of our findings that make them so so fantastic make sure you follow us on instagram at the perseverance reaction in order to recommend the favorite singers for us to react to What's up YouTube? Hope you guys are feeling good. Today guys, we're back again to new video guys. This is my long <laughs> awaited, anticipated friend. Um, he's a Muslim, so please introduce yourself. Yo, I'm Ahmed Ba Ahmed Ba. And I'm a Muslim and he's a brother man of mine, a Christian, yeah. And I'm just here as an invitee to talk about Islamic stuff. He's been doing it for a while, yeah, and He's been asking me questions. I said, invite me over, so we'll do something. So I'm happy to be here, bro. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I brought my Bible, and here is his Quran. Mm -hmm. I hope you guys can see that. Um, so we just want to bring out um, honest feedback about what you think about some certain videos. Um, we're not here to argue or stuff, but we're just here to um, point out our own opinion about some certain videos. Yeah. It's going to be fun, bro. I'm, I'm sure. Lot. I've got that feeling already that it will be fun. Guys, you know how I do it, guys. You talk less about it when we ask more. Let's get downstairs with you. Prophet said, On the day of judgment, you will reach a position of misery. People will be miserable. People will, some of them will be saddened. People would have given up hope in some ways. And then the Prophet wasallam said the long hadith. The people will gather each other. And they will begin to question what's going to happen to us. And so they will remember the Prophets. Let's go to the Prophets. Let's ask them. Let's come to them. And ask them to intercede for us so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can begin the judgment, the hisab, the accountability. Prophet said, In this life I had a dua. And this dua, I kept it. Whereas every other prophet was given their dua which they asked for. As for my dua which I kept specific for me, was that, oh Allah, save my ummah on the day of judgment. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Behold, your Lord may raise you a beautiful raising on the day of judgment. What is that? It is the raising of the intercession. And this is the way it will go. He said, the people will go to Adam alayhi salam. And they will say to him, Ya Adam, Anta Abu al-Bashar. You are the father of all mankind. You are our father. Allah created you with his hands. Please intercede for us on this day. And then Adam alayhi salam will say, Ilaykum anni, ilaykum anni. Go away from me. Please go away from me. Inni akhafu mithla alladhi takhafu. I fear the same thing you are fearing. Inni asaytu rabbi. I disobeyed my Lord once. Inna rabbi qad ghadiba ghadaban lam yaghdab mithlahu qad. Today, my Lord is in a state of anger, which he has never been angry like this before. Go to the one who is after me. So we go to Nuh, alayhi salam. And we say, Ya Nuh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you. You are the second father of mankind. Intercede for us for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to begin the judgment. And then Nuh, alayhi salam, will say the same thing. No. I would like to ask a question. Um, is this how um, it is for you guys? Like, yeah, the hadith stated that what will happen on the day of judgment, like yeah. um, people will be standing waiting for a time for the for God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to start the judgment. Good because nice. like people will be like the sun will come closer based on like some of the hadith, like the sun will come closer and people will be sweating in a way, like standing like their sweat profusing out, like people yeah. will be swimming in their sweat, like it's kind of like a bad day. Like everyone will be worried what will happen to them. So you see, that's where those stats, like we the people will go to like the prophets of God and 
starting from Adam, alayhi salam, when he will go to him, just like how he stated, like, you go to him and ask him, like, please talk to God so that he will start the judgment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. But, but the thing is, yeah, like, even him is scared for himself, like, he doesn't know what will happen to him. That is well, the day, like, yeah. Even though he's a prophet, but he doesn't know what will happen to him. To him. If God will allow him to enter heaven or not. Mm-hmm. So you see, he's thinking about himself. Yeah. So now they're coming to know that prophet Noah, and he will say the same thing again. Oh, so, wow. so you see. You see, you see how it looks like now. Um, and the Bible, it's, it's, it was not written like that. Okay. So um, when I watched this for the first time, uh, that was when I knew um, something like that actually existed. Yeah, it will happen. So, yeah. I was like, mm-hmm. this was not um, how uh, my Christian belief, uh, that is on the pattern. We, so how, we how, how is your own life? Is it like, um, gee, when it's time, um, an NJ is going to um, blow the trumpet, only God knows when it's going to be time. So when it's time, when you hear the, um, the, 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 trumpet. the trumpet, then um, everybody would just be like, something has really happened. No one expected it. Mm. You understand? Then um, Jesus Christ is going to come from heaven with thousands of angels mm. and come down. Um, the dead will rise. You understand? Mm. So the just will be um, people who are holy and a clean spirits who follow the guidelines of um, the Bible. We are sent to heaven. Okay. So you see the trumpet thing you're talking about is the same thing. The first trumpet will be blown mm. and the second one, like, I think the first one, that's the end of the time. Mm. That's what you call rapture. Mm. Like, then the second trumpet will be blown when everybody will be risen up here. Yeah. Yeah. So you see, like, uh, when it comes to, like, Islam and the word of God and the Hadith, it tells you about different things here. This is one part of what will happen. Okay. Yeah, like, when that side you're talking about, the rapture, like, the trumpet, uh, we have this angel which is that also like this raffle. Yeah. yeah cool. Like the first trumpet will be blown mm. and the world will come to an end. And the second trumpet will be blown. Yeah. Everyone will raise up. Right, yeah. yeah. So that's the same thing like in that sense. So, but you have different accounts of how things will happen. Okay, so that is stages. Yeah. So let's say um this stage now that I'm talking about are you meet the Adam, then meet Noah. Yeah. So like, which what stage is this? For? Like you are already like you stand in front of God now, waiting for for you to be judged. Uh huh. That's it. Like the trumpet has been blown at that time. We've been raising up and gone to like where God wants us to like be where the okay. um, judgment will happen. Okay. So that's where like they are, we are there waiting and the sun will come closer. God will bring it closer and everyone will be worried what will happen to them. And you'll be standing there, you'll be sweating profusely and someone will be even swimming in his sweat. So like you are being worried, you're being tired, you don't know what will happen. Mm-hmm. Everywhere is like confused. So you think like, oh, what's next? Like we should go to the prophets of God, the messengers of God that God sends. Maybe God will, when they seek God's, um, like please like start the journey or something like God will consider them because we see them as holy people. Holy people yeah. yeah, so that's it. So it's giving you the account. When you follow the story, it will get to a point like when they will talk about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Like each Prophet we are giving um, a chance to make a dua, like a prayer for what they want you get. Mm. So all the other Prophet made, but Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, like he said, no, he will keep it for the day of judgment to make that prayer. And the prayer is to like, for God to forgive his, forgive his Ummah, his Ummah, like we the generation, like, that follow God's word, like the most monotheistic religion. Okay. So that's it. But we'll get to that point, I'm sure. Let's keep watching guys. Ilaykum anni, ilaykum anni. Go away from me, go away from me. I fear the same thing you are fearing. I made my dua upon my people. My Lord is angry in a state where he has never been angry like this before. Go to the one after me. Go to the one after me. So then we go to the next prophets, till we reach Ibrahim alayhi salam. And Ibrahim alayhi salam on that day would also respond in the same way. Go to the one after me. We keep going from prophet to prophet. This is all the Muslims and all the disbelievers, everyone. So then we go finally to Musa alayhi salam. 
And Musa alayhi salam responds in the same way. He said, then we go to Isa alayhi salam. And Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, responds in the same way. And he adds, the people took me as a God. Therefore, today I am not qualified to face my Lord. How am I supposed to face him? I've got an answer to this. Oui, I've got oui. something I have to answer. To. Oui. This part is also written in the Quran. Yeah, you see some of these things like, in the Quran, it's like the word from God, yeah? From mm -hmm. God to like Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. You see like the hadith, it's the simple like, when you say hadith, like it's the thing that the Prophet said that okay. he did and all his teachings you okay. get. So some things are not explained vividly like in the Quran, but you explain it further okay. and people kept account of it. And okay. you check the chain of command, like from which teacher to this teacher to this, and up to the chain of Muhammad so you okay. know it's authentic. I understand. Um, this part when he said, um, Jesus, when you get to Jesus Christ, um, Jesus Christ would say people took him as God, that so, people should get away from him. Um, no, like he said, people take him as God, so he can't face his Lord because like he's maybe he doesn't know what his Lord will say. Like it, you, it's it's for yeah. me as a Christian, we believe like according to what our Bible said, it said, um, if you do not deny me on earth, Jesus Christ said that. He said when you go to heaven, him himself is not going to deny you. So um this part kinda of like um contradicts your uh, own teaching. The, yeah, they want to You know, like, you know the issue with um us and you people is this like we don't see jesus as a god as a lord yeah we see him as a prophet of god because even in this surah surah mariam when um they give accounts about how his mother gave birth to him miraculously mm -hmm. when he came to his people they were saying like so like you've done something really bad like you like you you spoil your chastity and something like that so God commanded him to point on the child. And in the Quran, God stated like, um, in the Quran, Jesus spoke when he was uh, at his cradle, yeah. when he was a baby. A few days older. Yeah, yeah. When he said, God has bestowed blessing upon me from now to the end of time. He has chosen me as a messenger. That part was not written in the Bible. Fine. So you see, so in the Quran, God stated that like, you see, some things are not mentioned in the Bible. I don't know why. Mm. But in the Quran, it's mentioned there. God and Jesus spoke when he was at his cradle, we talk about God has blessed him from the day he was born to the day he will die. Mm -hmm. And also, he, he is a messenger sent by God. That statement was written in the Bible. In the Quran. In the Quran sorry. Yeah, yeah. So that's it. You see, the, the issue I'm having here is when um, Jesus tell him to... to like, like, the thing is, like, what I want you to understand, when he came to him for help, mm -hmm. like, I told you, like, all the prophets... Majority of them, they were like scared. They don't know what will happen to them at that point. What in the day of judgment, the way you see things, you don't know what will happen to you. I, I get you get I, me. You you guys see him as a prophet. The way I picture Jesus as is, is not a prophet. Oh, you picture him as a Lord. Yeah, kind of like as kind of like after God, Jesus. Oh, okay. You get so, so I, I don't I don't see it like when it's time for judgment after seven God mm -hmm. praying through Jesus Christ to get to God, then at the, at the final day of stage, Jesus tell me, I should get away from him, like I should stay, that him himself don't know how he's going to be judged. It's, it's, okay, it's, I, I, it's, I understand. Uh -huh, you, it's, it's looks somehow for I me, I'm you. like, so like, so, um, what then is, it's already contradicting the word itself, because you said, I should not deny you here in heaven, here, here on earth, I should save you, I should tell the word about you, um, by me doing that, I'm also going to find the Father who is in heaven. Okay. So after doing all your work on earth, then I finally ascended to heaven. After this um, second um, trumpet, then I get there, then you tell me to go away. It's... Okay, so from your side, but like, you, you see, I want you to understand. Like you say, you pray to God through Jesus here. Yeah. In Islam, we don't have that thing, like you pray to God through somebody. That is kind of like the difference. So you see, like you, you don't have that barrier between you and God. That's what we so, believe. You talk to God directly, directly. Like some Christians or like the Catholic per se, them practicing this thing. Like I need to like talk to a saint, mm. confess my sin to so, a human being. Uh, no, like Islam, we don't do that. No, like Christians do. Yeah, Pentecostals, we don't do that. We just feel like we confess our sins to God. 
That's it. You confess your sins to God and always God will forgive you. And even there is some hadith that said that ever, whenever you commit a sin, you like you hide it, you don't bring it out. Mm -hmm. On day of judgment, God will forgive your sins because like you never showed it out, brought it out. Okay, mm -hmm. you concealed it. Like the thing is that sometimes you go to like um, you've committed a lot of sin. God will just say maybe one thing you did best and judge you because of that and say you like you make it to heaven. Yeah, there are some instances uh, mentioned, like the hadith and other things, like when there was this woman, like, he just saved the life of an animal. He made it to heaven. So yeah. it's not by your, like, you need to do the work here, yeah, but it's mm -hmm. by grace of God that you enter heaven. So you see that part, like, when he said, like, um, they should go, like, to the next yes, person, definitely. because, like, in our religion, you get... In our context, Jesus never claimed divinity like he is a God. You get me? I get Fine. So, like, when a lot of people is like Christians, specifically, yeah. don't you see him as Lord, yeah? When you see that, it's like blasphemous in our religion because God is when it's mentioned, like, uh, in Surah Ikhlas. It's a Ul who allow Ahad. When they were asking about God, God told Muhammad, say, Ul, say, Hua, the God you're asking for, Allah, Allah, hmm. Ahad. Who Allah who are, he mm. is one. Do you see? We Christians also believe God is one. No. But it's. Um, so, how can you explain your Trinity life? <laughs> it's like a um, stage or a level. We see God as the ultimate. But we see Jesus as the Son of God. He came from God. Then the Holy Spirit is a, that is a comforter that is present here on earth. You get that's how we see you see the Holy Spirit as someone who is within us. Okay. So I, I get you. So like for my own side, it's not like that. God, God doesn't have anyone as like a partner to him. Right? That's why when you continue that verse, that sort of class, hmm. it goes that Allah after that Allah Allah had it's hmm. Allah who summoned. God is independent. He beget not, neither what he was he begotten. Well, I'm ah, there is so, no so, one compared to him. He's so one. Um, the statement said he he begot not, then he cannot he cannot um he, have he be, a son or he, a daughter. Yeah, or and when you like um, there is one video like um, this guy um, one of one great Islam scholars like I think you know his name, this South African guy. What's his name again? Not Zakir, I am Ahmed Didat here. When you look at the word begotten. Mm. And the uh, like the actual meaning, like you give birth, like sexual intercourse and stuff like that. That's what the meaning of begotten. You know, sometimes the, the way um, we human see things is different from how God sees things. Yeah, but like you, in so, the English word, like when you see begotten, yeah, according, you, according to the English word, begotten is um, be, uh, yeah, be, um, give birth to the child or stuff like that. Yeah. But I feel like um, God having a son. Do not come through that process. You no, know, let me use an instance where like Adam now. We also believe Adam came from sand. Mm -hmm. Normal sense, it's impossible for a human being to come through sand. Mm -hmm. The woman have to bear you. Yeah. So sometimes it is, the way we see things is different from how God sees things. That is how, for me, I, I never see Jesus Christ as being given birth to, like God gave birth. I don't, I don't know how God looks like. <laughs> so I feel like Jesus Christ came from God, but I don't know how it happened. Yeah, but then you should not be using the word begotten. Because like in, in the Bible, there are a lot of people God said like sons of God. Yeah. Yeah, like I think he's in David, Israel. Mm. So you see like, um, when you look at the context, like I, it was in David when he continued using the word sons of God. Like you mean a worshiper of God. In that context, the way he mentioned it in that side of the Bible. Okay, yeah, sure. like it's like saying sons of God, like worship of God. Yeah. So if you look at the context, say like um God using it in the Bible, sons of God, like worship of God, that means we're all sons of God. If you look at it in that context, mm -hmm. like saying sons of God, worshippers of God. Yeah, okay, that's the meaning of Abdullah, worshipper of Allah. So you see. Mm -hmm. So like this side of us having this contradiction, like. Uh, it's a debate that has been for a very long time. A long time. Yeah, long so time. Uh, all I could say, like, <laughs> that's your belief. That's <laughs> my belief. <laughs> so you see, and, and, and one thing too, like, I always say, like, 
it's mentioned in the Quran, there is no compulsion in religion. You don't force someone to join. Same question, we don't force anyone to join. Yeah, that's or it. willingly from your heart. Because if you force someone, it's like the person I'm not yet given his heart to Christ, according to how we see yeah, it. That's it. When so, you say, I think when you continue that verse, there's no compulsion in religion. Like, truth can always overtake darkness or something like that. I can't yeah. remember something okay. like that. Basically. It's true. Truth always overcome darkness. Good always um, overshadow bad. Yeah. So let's keep watching again and see one more. Yeah. Two. The people took me as a god. Go to the one after me. I am not qualified for it. Let's do it. Finally, we reached Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, this is what I have been favored with on that day. That I will be given an intercession for you people. And the only intercession I'll be given for is for my ummah, for only for my nation who followed me. As for the rest of the nations, they will have to go behind their prophets, behind their imams. And everyone else who was disbeliever will go behind whoever they used to follow. So whoever their authority was, the angels will say, go to whoever you used to follow. Our Rasul Sallallahu says, when the people come to me and they say, please, Ishfa'lana, intercede for us for the judgment to begin. I will call out on that day and say, Ana laha, ana laha. He says, Thumma asjudu li rabbi sajdat. I prostrate to my Lord such a prostration, so prolonged. Only Allah knows how long, ma sha Allah, and asjud, as long as Allah wills for me to make sujood. And I call out to Allah in such a dua that I've never called out before in my life. I've never used these words in praising him and calling out to him in my sujood. And then my ummah who followed me, they will prostrate behind me. A caller will call out, prostrate down to your Lord. Allah says in the Quran, on that day, a saq will be revealed. What is this saq? What is the true nature of this saq? Allah only knows. In Muslim, the book of Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ says, my Lord reveals his saq. Only Allah knows the nature of this saq. There is nothing like unto him and he hears all things and sees all things. So we will not dwell into the description of this reality called a saq. The Muslims, the believers will see it and then they will be called to prostrate. So then, bi'ithnillah, we prostrate. Except for the hypocrites. Allah says, Fala yastati'oon. They will not be able to prostrate. And the disbelievers will not be able to prostrate. As for the Prophet Sallallahu and his Ummah who are still prostrating, the hadith says, Fi Allah. On that day, Allah will descend. How will he descend? What does descending mean? Only Allah knows the nature of this descension. And Allah says in the Quran, on that day, your Lord and his angels will come. The angels in line like soldiers. And Allah's throne will be brought. What does this throne look like? Only Allah knows. But it will be brought and there will be eight angels carrying Allah's throne. These angels, the description came in the hadith that they are so humongous that it will take 300 years journey for a person to reach between the shoulder and the earlobe. They look in that nature. What the earlobe looks like, Allah knows. What the shoulder looks like, Allah knows. But the point is these angels are humongous. Eight of them carrying Allah's throne. The Prophet ﷺ said, the sky, the worldly sky, this universe that we see, compared to the second sky, because there are seven skies Allah created, is like a ring thrown into the desert. And the second compared to the third is like a ring thrown into the desert. And the third compared to the th fourth is like a ring thrown into a desert. And so on until you reach the seventh. And the seventh compared to the arsh, to the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is like a drop in one hadith, like a drop in the ocean. And there is Allah's kursi, which is above the throne. And the kursi encompasses the whole skies and the earth. It's even larger than the arsh, than the throne. That will be brought on the day of judgment. And then Allah will say, Ya Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, irfa' ra'sak, lift your head, was'al tu'ata, and ask for anything, I will give you. 
Then the Prophet وسلم, lifts his head. And the only thing he will say is, Ya Rabbi, Ummati, Ummati. Oh my Lord, save my nation, save my nation. The Ummah of the Prophet. وسلم, and he will know them. Al Rasul وسلم, will know his Ummah which he interceded for. How will he know them? When the Prophet وسلم, was saying, I will be awaiting for you at the Hawd, he said, Follow my Sunnah and stick to it. What I am on and my companions stick to it and I will be waiting for you there and I will call you and say come and drink from the fountain. Sharbatan hani'atan mari'a la yazma'u ba'daha abada. Prophet ﷺ said you will drink from it. A drink that you will never ever be thirsty after that again. Thirst as in the quenching of thirst which brings you to fatigue. That's the thirst we're talking about. You will never be thirsty like that ever again. And you will enjoy it. This fountain on the day of judgment, he says, it will be colored like milk. You'll say, this is like milk, but it's not like the milk of this earth. It will taste sweeter than honey, but not like the honey of this earth. And you will have cups of gold and silver. Some of the ummah of the Prophet ﷺ, we ask Allah to let us drink from that. I mean, will drink by themselves. And some of them, the Prophet ﷺ, will give them to drink from his blessed hand. Before the Prophet ﷺ died, he went to his final visit to the grave of the shuhada, of the martyrs, and to al baqiyah And he made dua for them, and then he said the following words. The only thing I will miss of not seeing is that I will die not seeing my brethren. And then Abu Hurair radiallahu anhu said, Ya Rasulullah, awalasna nahnu bi ikhwanik. Are we not your brothers already? Look, we're here. You can see us. He said, Ya Abu Hurairah, you are my companions. Yes, and you are my brothers. But the brethren I'm talking about, they, don't, they are not here. They are the ones who believed in me and followed me, but never saw me, never met me. We ask Allah that we are them. Amen. He said, what will happen? He said, I'm going to meet them on the day of judgment and I will call them to drink from the fountain. He said, How will you know them and you have never seen them? He said, if I told you that a person had many horses and some of them were very black in color and among them there were horses that were striped with white on their faces and on their arms and on their legs and on their tails and he said, well, isn't he able to tell the difference between these horses and those? He said, yes, very easy. He said, on a day of judgment, my ummah will come to me, ghullan muhajjalin. They will come striped with nur, brightness, nur on their faces. This is what it meant. It means on their faces and on their arms and on their legs. How did I know this? Because the Prophet ﷺ said, وَذَلِكَ مِنْ أَثَرِ الْوُضُوءِ This is because the effect of the wudu they used to make. What does that mean? It means they used to pray. They used to prepare for prayer. They were purified by making wudu. Isbagh al wudu, his patient. So some of them will be prevented by the angels. And they will look like Prophet will say, Are they from my ummah? And some of them the Prophet used to know from this life. And you'll say, They are from my ummah. And Allah will say to him, They changed after you. They changed after you, meaning they changed your sunnah after you. The innovators, the ones who apostated, they changed. And the Prophet ﷺ will say, sorrowness and depth of hellfire for those who changed my sunnah after me, those who changed my way after me. My brothers and sisters, this is when, at this point, this is when the sky above us will be filled darkness we look up and what do we see we see our books our records hmm. oh interesting <laughs> yeah for real i don't know i don't know for you but like it's really interesting like watching this and trying to like know the thing about like islam the quran and the hadith it talks about like what has passed, present, and what will happen in the future. So, 
people you already know. And you know, sometimes we was talking about um, this fountain you get. But let me just start from where you said, like, every Uma or nation will go behind their leaders. Mm -hmm. So, like, um, we that are now, like, we see us as our, the generation of Muhammad. He's the last prophet. So, we'll be behind him. Um, Jesus or Isa's time, his young people will be behind him and all of that. But, like, you you know sometimes when you're doing something bad per se, you, you get to a point like even if you're going for an interview, the sister behind black, white, even you know you are like you're putting on gray, for yeah. example, you want to like sneak into that side. Yeah. So the way I see the day of judgment, like even if you are you you want to sneak to another person's side, you can't. And when you see the followers of like the the prophets, you have some people, they'll say I'm following um, Jesus, I'm following the Muhammad, or I'm following God's command. But when you look at what they do, it's different from that. So you can't stand behind those people. That means you go stand behind Satan. For sure, because it's based on your actions. It's not what you think you get. So that's that's one thing Like I think, and I'm sure it would be like that. If you're, you're not someone who was prayerful, you can't stand with those people. Because like, you wake up, in Islam, we have this in the world that's like, your friends you should have or the people you interact with okay. will be some people that are like pushing you to like know your God more and other things. Because like the people you used to interact with when you die, you wake up with them again. Mm. Yeah. So imagine if you're interacting with bad people and always not, you know, working with the right people. So when you resurrect, you will so, see them around you. Yeah. So how, how will it be like? So how will you stand? at the back of Isa or Noah or Ibrahim or Muhammad, peace be upon them all. So it's, you know, it's not possible. It's not something that you can do for yourself. At that time, it's what you used to do here in this world that will determine where you will stand. Sure. Okay. Then the other side, you see that we are talking about like the fountain where the prophet will be uh, sitting there waiting for the people passing, you get, then he will recognize them. You get, this is from my Umar, or this is from my generation, or this is someone that used to like follow me, you get. Um, if you see someone like who is not following God, like you know, you have people that follow Satan now. If they are passing, even so, like you recognize them, then they can't be allowed to like go there. And you see, it got to a point that really got me like really worried. Like in Islam, we don't have that thing like you being a modern Muslim, okay? Like, modern Muslim, like in the sense, oh, the olden days, what the prophet was teaching is archaic. We need to come up with new things, yeah. When people do it, you have people that innovate stuff. You get, like, I've watched one video, like, when uh, uh, the Muslim guy was saying about gay stuff, like, I didn't mention anything about you being gay. Christian, some Christians also support yeah. that. Yeah, and Islamically, no, it's not allowed. Same with religion. <laughs> so you see, so like, you have people that are innovating things to just please themselves. Their desires yeah. and all. So you see, so when during the prophet's time, there are things that you do, like, you see, you practice the sunnah of the prophet. Everything you want to, like, learn about life is being taught by the prophet. Nothing is hidden, you see. Then you come to the days of the Greeks, you see, I don't know if you've heard about Stoics uh, principle. If you read about Stoics, when I read about Stoics or listen to it, I just see, like, how the prophet was living, like, just being, like, you being content within, not fully in external sources for happiness. You are always content within. Like even in terms of like you drinking water, yeah. the prophet mentioned all of those things. For example, like if you want to drink water, you just don't gulp it. No, you take three sip slowly. The later you take the full one, like it gives you that energy to like drink well, like enjoy it more. Even the way you eat, like when the prophet was using his hands to eat, you know, it doesn't pass this side, like this side. No, it's just here you put the cup here, drink. And if you are talking about business, they tell you like, you no, know, uh, in English speaking country of Africa, they don't do it. But like in the French speakers, I've gone to Senegal, I've stayed there. When they use, they weigh everything they sell to you. Okay. So you see, so you have some people that cheat. What they do, if you are buying tomatoes in a bowl, what they'll do, they'll put sand on that, and, uh, yeah. then cover it. So you see, you talk about, I think, is this a white lonely motafi thing? Like, woe to those people that used to do something like that yeah. shit. And even in business, you are going to business with someone. You need to have two witnesses. 
Okay. So, yeah. like, the signing contract two so months. Yeah. So, if you choose one, maybe they can manipulate that one. True. But if it's two, it's it's not. It's not so, like, there are things that we are doing. You get if you follow the son of the prophet, like how you used to like dress and all of that things. How you you talk to people. I get. It. You see what you're saying now. It also calibrates um, how my religion is like. Okay. If you follow the Bible itself. Everything. The commandments from Genesis to Revelations. Mm. Your life is totally different. You, you, you don't see this world the way the world is. You see it totally different. Like, you feel like, um, why do people um, cheat? Why do people do this to um, another person? Why, why did you have to kill or stop like that? Mm. You feel like it's not necessary. At the end, what you are doing is your mission on earth is just to fulfill the purpose of God. To win more souls to him, and also um, live a very just life here on earth. Mm. So, when I start reading the Bible, like whenever I do it, mm. I read the Bible throughout, like Monday, Tuesday, if, even if I don't read Wednesday, Thursday, but I see changes within that Monday, Tuesday. Like, I feel like I'm a different person entirely. I don't act how I normally act, I don't behave how I normally behave. There are some things some people will do to provoke me, I will just be calm. Oh yeah, 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 you get that kind of thing. So it's it's the same to my Bible. Like if you follow it, you <laughs> you'll be a better person. Yeah, that, uh, that's true. Like you see, um, for a prophet, because like I'm talking about the person I know per se. Like the, the, uh, sorry, sorry for cutting the eating and drinking water. <laughs> oh yeah, so they didn't explain like how you eat or how okay, you drink water. Yeah, yeah. So that one is not like in the Quran. It's like the Hadith. Uh, the scenes, teachings of the prophet, like oh, the prophet lived his life. Yeah, yeah. So talking about Syria and all other things. So you see all those things, like talking about you being calm, you mm. know, you not react. The Stoics principle talks about that. Like you, you need to be not everything you react to. You ask yourself first how you perceive it. Is it bad or good? Your actions, you take your willpower to say no or say yes. Yeah. Fine. But when you look at the prophet's lifestyle, when I look at the Stoics principle, I just say like ah. It's him that the prophet has done all those things. You can't abuse him. He's just calm. And when he even conquered Makkah, because like he left Makkah, went to Medina, mm. when, he said, when he later came back, when he conquered Makkah, like people were thinking he would come and retaliate. But he, he bent, he was bowing down his head like with humility. You imagine someone has done something bad to you, take over. You, you, some people will be walking like yo, I'm, I'm the man, I'm back. You get just like um, who is this guy's name again? Um, the I think a president of South Africa, Mandela. Mandela. Yeah. The way when he was being treated badly, so then he came back to be um president. Then he didn't actually like retaliate or anything. That's it. Like he was, he bowed down his head, like bent, bent it down, like in a way that with humility and all those things. So you count all those things in the way if you like. Follow the sunnah of the prophet. There was this woman, based on his action, he changed his hand. Like, he helped the woman to carry some stuff, here, yeah? And the woman was saying, you know about that Muhammad, you've heard about him talking about a new god? Yeah. Because the Arabians were having, like, plenty of gods at that point in time. Okay. So, like, new gods. Like, he's talking like he's a, don't listen to him, he's a liar. And when he escorted the woman where the woman was, uh, like, to stop, and he asked him, is there anything else I can do for you? And the woman was like, no, he said, what's your name? He said, I'm Muhammad, the person you're talking about. Based on that, the woman changed and became a Muslim. Because wow. like, so you see, it's about it. And, and the things you're going through now, terrorism, like you've been a Muslim, that stereotype is on us. Like, um, you've been a Muslim, like you killed your law, white bro. So you lots. see, like, no. I, I don't mind to speak about that. Like, I always tell people that that is not half Muslim. Yeah. And, and the thing is, a lot of people that see that is people that have not interacted with Muslims. Muslim, like, yeah. Because, like, there's no compulsion in religion. And there are rules when the prophet was went into battle based on the few things I know. I don't know much about it. But, like, you know, they'll find an open place to, like, fight. You get the right letter. Okay, we'll meet. You know, the olden days, that's mm -hmm. how they used to do. And there are rules. You don't cut down trees. You don't fight who doesn't fight. You don't kill an old person. Mm -hmm. You don't uh, and kill children. You don't hold them as captive. Like, he used to take the female to, like... Um, when they don't fight into a place. Like, if you want to go, you can go. When you're there as a prisoner, he doesn't, like, treat you as a prisoner. He gives you food you eat. They take care of you. You get... So all those things, you look at it, it's... 
it's the way people are seeing now they will just take bomb go and bomb where people are just there not offending you just hear them no the prophet doesn't used to like do that so rules so like i just think that's a propaganda person true same. Things, yeah. same um guys we have a lot to say we have yeah. a lot to cover because of time so we have to round this up hope you guys enjoyed this video Comment yeah. down below what you think about this video, your opinion. Subscribe to this channel, give us a thumbs up, share this with us yeah. and many us. Come guys, you know how it's. We'll see you guys in the next video. Make sure you stay safe. I just bought a bag, like an old lady. I'm back, wood smoking, I don't own papers, pass that 808. That don't, don't shake her. Oh, bitch, you know I'm grinding like a pro skater. Baby, mama bugging, I'm so quick to hit ignore. Buku bitch, just in my bed. I got scales all